All right, Coach Tim here with Tara Austin, one of our members here at Fit to the Core. Um, this is our movement tip of the week. Today I'm going to cover the hip hinge. You might know it as a, a deadlift or an RDL. So the first thing that we do when we, we're teaching a client how to hip hinge, we're teaching the RDL version, so we're, we're eliminating the dropping of the hips with the deadlift at first just so they can start to just focus more on the actual hip hinge itself. So the first thing we want to the first thing we want to do is our foot position. We want to get her feet set right under her hips, so we don't want it too wide. This is going to be more of a hip hinge. So when we're talking about hip hinging, hinging at the hips, we're targeting the hips here. Right, just think right behind the legs. Um, the first thing we do is we for, we first teach the finishing position. So like we did with the push-ups, like we did with the squats in the last three weeks, we want to always bring it back to a plank position. So core stability. So her ribs are going to be locked in, all right, and when we're thinking about these RDLs, we also want to engage the lats. So without, obviously without a, uh, an implement, we'll, we teach it with the sandbag first, but we're just going to work on the hip hinge. But if we're talking about engaging the upper back so we get the whole chain connected, we're hinging at the hips here. She's always gripping the floor and she's tearing the floor apart. That way we're getting her hips turned on. As you can see here, we're staying with a nice neutral spine. So we like to say from the hip to the ear, we're maintaining that front plank position. Then she's going to push down into the ground and she's going to tuck her way back up through her pelvis. So we're finishing with, again, neutral spine. We should feel like we're finishing tall, not back. If she finishes back here, we're shortening the spine and we're hyperextending our lower back. That's one thing we don't want to do. So um, in a normal deadlift, if we're teaching it with a hex bar, we're going to teach her how to engage her lats by pushing back into my fist here. This helps to just connect the whole entire chain together. But the great thing about using this sandbag is the sandbag is a good feedback mechanism, so we don't have to do that. So with the sandbag, we've got two handles here, which we call the webbing. She's going to grab that. So our first cue here, she's already going to have her front plank and her hips tucked because this is the finished position. Then she's going to pull these handles apart. Engaging these handles and tearing them apart is going to engage those lats now, which is going to engage her whole entire body, making sure that she's staying stable and stiff and using every muscle in her body to connect all her uh, limbs together, basically. So the same thing is going to happen here. First, she's going to grip the floor with her feet. She's going to tear the floor apart. She's doing the same thing with the bag. She's always going to keep that bag, the webbing, torn apart here. She's maintaining her neutral spine, chin's tucked. We don't want a chin up position. As soon as the chin comes up, we also shorten the spine as well. So we want to keep this long, nice position here. Her heels are loaded even though her whole foot. And again, she's gripping the ground. She's going to push down into the ground and she's going to tuck up to finish. So we're finishing nice and tall. So when I push on her shoulder, there's zero. This is how I know she's not a sponge. She's nice and stiff. If she gets into this lower back, now she's a sponge. Now I know she doesn't have good core stability. So she's going to give you a couple more reps. This is our RDL. So Soft knees, heels, feet gripping, floor tearing apart. We use the bag to engage those lats. We're making sure the whole chain is engaged here. So this is the first thing that we do to teach an RDL. We could use uh, reaching movements, but just for this purpose here, the bag is a really good feedback me mechanism. So this is more of a stiff-legged deadlift, if you want to think about it. So the next version, we would go from there. So that's our first hip hinge. Second version of our hip hinge is we can either use kettlebells or we can teach the deadlift or we can go right to a hex bar. We're going to teach the, show you the hex bar position. So as we were teaching this stiff leg RDL, when we're doing a deadlift now, now we're going to start to involve our glutes a little bit more by dropping the hips down to the ground. So it's the hinge that she already knows how to do, but all she has to do is drop the hips to engage the bar. So we'll get her in here and she already now knows how to engage her upper back from weeks of doing that sandbag. So now she's going to do the same exact movement, but now we're going to drop our hips a little bit more. Her chin's down. She's going to squeeze the bar super tight, grip the ground, spread the floor apart. Everything's going to finish the same. She's going to drive down into the ground and come up with a tuck and finish in that neutral position. She's going to reach her hips back again, weights on the heels, even though she's gripping the whole foot, and she's going to come right back up, drive up, and tuck. So we'll do about three reps here. This first one, this next one, hold it up. So again, I'll check for stiffness. I know she's got a nice, solid, stiff core because she's not spongy. She's gonna reach the hips down and back now. You're gonna see the angle of her. Nope. So we always like the cue. She should be able to see the tongue of her shoe so we're not making this into a squat. And good. Good job. So a 
common mistake with a deadlift here, and I'll show it. So as you can see, when she was into that deadlift, she had a nice shallow shin angle. The common mistake is driving none of these forward, hyperextending and making this too much of a squat. With a, with a hex bar, you can do more of a hybrid squat deadlift, but what we don't want is those knees driving forward and hyperextending your lower back to get down. But in both these cases here, in order for us to load the hips, we have to keep that core engaged, which all comes down from the foundation of a front plank and teaching that core stability so we're not extending into our lower back. Um, so uh, that's our movement tip of the week. Uh, thank you, Tara, and I hope that helps with your uh, hinging and deadlifts.